Hi guys and welcome back to the hot seat. I am your host Priscilla Moy and we are live here at the social media show studio. I hope you guys really enjoyed Evan. He is a great comic. He's up and coming. He's just starting but you can see that he has a persistence and the drive to get where he wants to go. So like I said we're going to move over to a different part of entertainment. We were doing stand-up comedy and now we're going to move over to the music side. I always love having performers on here because even though we've had a lot of musicians we've had a lot of singers all of them are different in their own right for style, their voice, their start everything like that so my next guest is actually so amazing he has an amazing resume he's traveled all over the world singing won so many awards and was recently just inducted into the las vegas black music hall of fame so everyone please welcome ec adams hello how are you welcome to the show it's a pleasure to meet you pleasure to have you on i love the shoes he's Thank all bedazzled it's absolutely amazing <laughs> a man of class and style oh, obviously I appreciate it. So, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you I'm for having me. Great. So, you actually have been in, mostly in Las Vegas your whole life, apart yes. being born in Mississippi, right? Yes, yes, yes. I was, yeah. I was born in Vicksburg, Mississippi, mm -hmm. but I was raised right here in Las yes. Vegas. Yes, yes. And you're kind of inspired by the Jackson 5, is that correct? I was inspired. I saw the Jackson 5 one day on TV. Mm -hmm. I was like eight years old, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. What was it about them? Was it the performance, the stage, it, the it way was, they it moved? Was the performance and it was really how people responded mm, to it. Okay. You know, if I thought there's somebody who can bring so much joy and happiness to people, right. that's what I want to do. Okay. Bring joy and happiness to people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's they've, they've changed history with their music oh, in a way, uh, obviously. Awesome. Right? We yes. all know mm -hmm. that story. So, how did you start? Where did you in your, you know, eight-year-old mind where you're like, okay, I'm going to do this somehow? This is Sing a, lessons. This is the story. Is This is an amazing story, but this is a true story. I was being eight years old. I used to rehearse every night in the bathroom. Wow, okay. At home, in the mirror, doing my mm -hmm. best Michael Jackson. And my sisters and brothers and my mother didn't even know I sang. Because, you know, at that age, you're kind of afraid right. about it. You know what I'm saying? But I knew, you know, that's what I wanted to do. So I stayed consistently with it, just practicing, practicing, mm -hmm. practicing. And then I started taking choir. I started singing in church, mm -hmm. uh, St. James Missionary Baptist Church, when I was eight years old. And one day we were having a men's day program. And the... Uh, the choir director asked, did anybody want to sing a solo? And so everybody sitting in the choir and he asked, he said, does anybody want to sing a solo in this show? And I like put up my little hand. <laughs> and he taught me my very first solo. It's called Walk yeah. Around Heaven All Day. And that's where I just never stopped. Yeah. Have you ever taken like professional vocal training or you just you naturally get As I got older, mm -hmm. I, I went to a vocal coach to learn okay. how to breathe and yeah. learn how, you know, and learn how to project and learn where you get your air from to breathe from it. Right. You know, I wanted to learn those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Because mm -hmm. in order to maintain your voice, you don't want to yes. ruin it. Because yes. if you're doing it the wrong way, yeah. as you get older, right, you can strain yes. it and then that's He it. actually taught us how to sing, like if you, sometime in the wintertime or if you catch mm -hmm. a cold and you get hoarse, he actually taught me how to sing over the mm -hmm. top of being hoarse so that you can still the show the show must go on right you know what i'm saying so yeah so you traveled a lot so you did a lot of church choir you did choir in college is that yes, correct so you yes, did a did. lot of choir and so when was your first performance outside of choir to like an audience what was that like I, you know in high school actually because i did a lot of performance we had a a group in high school mm -hmm. and what we used to do in high school we had a band i, I used to attend El Dorado high school and there we had a group called Sounds of the Sun. And what we would do, we would go around to all the junior high mm -hmm. schools and we get to perform in front of all of the high school. We had a live band okay. and everything. Yeah. So that's why I really got to get out there performing and live in front mm -hmm. of an audience. Yes. So let's talk about how you moved from that to like touring abroad. Because okay. you didn't just tour in the country. You went to South yes. Korea, right? Yes, I've been to North Korea, South Korea. Oh, right. South that's Korea. what, when I saw North Korea, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, yes. well. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. That was amazing. Um, a lot of us uh, that grew up here in high school, different schools, and they had their different bands, individual bands at their school. So about five of us, we got together after high school, and we formed a band called the Look Band. So we were all from different neighborhoods here in Vegas and different high schools. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we formed a band, and then we got a chance to go over a tour. Uh, we were on a USO tour, and so that was a military mm -hmm. tour. And so we went to all military bases mm -hmm. in Korea. Unbelievable. Um, and that was in 1991. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's the first time I ever traveled out of the country. Mm -hmm. And we were there during the holiday season, during the Christmas holiday okay. season, going into New Year. 
it was very cold. Yes. <laughs> it was very cold. I had never experienced it being that cold like that. So I actually had a coat made while I was over there. And believe it or not, when I came home, it, w it didn't get cold enough to wear that coat here. Oh, was, yeah, not in Vegas. <laughs> but, but you know what? But fast forward to now, it's cold enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's at nighttime. Cold. Yeah, it's at nighttime. A little, little chilly. Yeah, the it's... wind hits you and you're like, oh. <laughs> it's been cold. So that was uh, being on that USO tour. We were on that USO tour for three months. Mm -hmm. And so I got a chance to travel all through North Korea, South Korea, Seoul, Korea. And one of the most amazing things that I've ever experienced on that tour was I had an opportunity to travel from North Korea to South Korea across the DMZ. Okay. And a lot of people didn't know what the DMZ is, but it's called the Demilitarized Zone. Mm -hmm. right? You might know it. And, it was, and what separates North, North Korea and South Korea was still at war. They yep. just weren't fighting. Yeah. And so I learned all of that while I was yeah. there, and it was just wow. So it can be kind of scary, though. You're like, oh, oh my God, am I right. able to cross yeah. back down there without like thinking they're and, a spy, and, right? And it's like that's that. one of the amazing things that happened mm -hmm. while we were there. We were um, traveling from uh, North Korea over to South Korea, and we had to cross the DMZ. And again, they have these things called rock soldiers. And these are soldiers that stand at the gate to yep. let you through. Yep. You know, and they stand it. Nobody smiling. It's like, nope. oh, it's a very serious situation. <laughs> you feel like, oh, right. God, I feel like I did something wrong. Did I? Oh, my God, I'm going to jail. I feel like I'm, like, I'm, I'm not going to go home Everything now. Right. so serious. And so we right. traveled across there. We performed that night. But we had to be back across the DMZ before it closed. And see, this is something, again, we learned all this mm -hmm. while we were there. And we, we got off stage. We had like 20 minutes to get back, but then we had to pack up. And so as we're coming across on the other side of the bridge, and we could see them closing on that side, and it was like, oh, my goodness, are we going to make it? <laughs> so we got to the other side of the bridge, and we had a, a Korean driver. And he explained to them what was going on, and they let us in. And I was like, ooh, thank oh, you. Good <laughs> like, if I get stuck here, there's no <laughs> going back. <laughs> That's well, scary, no. yeah. You know, and exactly. I, learned that, I learned at that time that there in Korea, when you get out of high school, you don't get a choice. You have to go to the military. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. I, there's so many things that I learned. Yes. wonderful. Eventually, you have like a max year yeah. as a male yeah. to go. And no matter what you're doing, you'd be in the height of your career. Yes. And you got to drop it. You got to drop it. 18 months, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. You That's how it is. I mean, no, <laughs> it. <laughs> like, I feel bad, you know. Right, right. So why a lot of them that move over here, they give up their citizenship yeah. instead of having dual because they're that's it's yeah. a lot to ask. It is. Um, so... With traveling around, how do you think that shaped you as a performer instead well, of just staying in Vegas, which a lot of people do? Well, the beautiful thing about it is, well, the one thing about it, because I've performed at just about every hotel on mm -hmm. the Las Vegas Strip, but um, when you get an opportunity to travel outside of the country, you get to see how it is in different places all over the world. And believe it or not, they appreciate you more mm -hmm. out of the country. It's amazing. They actually thought I was Michael Jackson getting off the plane once. <laughs> I was like, but it was our drummer, and our drummer was yeah. a big comedian, and at that time had long curl and everything. He said, that's Michael Jackson. <laughs> it was like, Michael Jackson. <laughs> you had to get the shades, and I just wore a red jacket and been like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I learned how much they really, outside of the country, you know, they really love you. Mm -hmm. They show you so much love, and it's amazing how you come home and be like, wow. It's a, it's a difference, you know, it's a difference. But the beautiful thing about it is music is universal. And that's what I love about music because you don't even have to speak English and you mm -hmm. can understand. Oh, yeah. I've met people, um, one time I was on a Motown tour, and even though they didn't speak English, they knew the songs. And they yeah. sing aloud, and you can see the joy and the happiness right. that it brings to Right. People. Or that, they'll know, like, the tune, you'll see it yeah. dancing along to the beat, and you're yeah. like, okay, okay. We're, we're here, we're <laughs> okay. communicating. Right, right. And right. so that's why I tell people, I'll tell music is universal. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's so, it brings different people from different genres together. Yeah. That's what I love about it. Yeah, so I'm sure that you kind of garnered a lot of different stage presence and confidence going to places where you're just like, oh my god, wait a minute, like, yeah. I'm doing something yeah. right, right. they're right. loving me. They're actually cheering right. for me. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So you're really known as your charismatic stage presence. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen some of your performances mm -hmm. online and you're you're up there, you're center stage, you got all this energy. Mm -hmm. And where does that really derive from? Is it your love for the stage or do you feed mostly off the audience or do you kind of have this wall? Mm -hmm. Do you feel? Well, the thing for me is I love, I actually love, let me make sure I express that enough, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can step on stage, because you never know what people are going through. You never know what somebody can be not feeling with somebody, you know, just had lost their job. You never know what somebody's going through. And just to be able to bring joy to people and you see it on their faces, 
energy is infectious. You know, I love what I do. Before I hit the stage, I'm already on 500. I'm like, oh, I'm like a caged up right. animal. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And then when I hear that live, it's nothing like live entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear that music live, I don't know how people can sit still because I can't. And right. I'm on stage and I can't sit still. But that, that's just the fire that I have burning in me ever since I was a child that wanting to do this and wanting to succeed at doing this, right. wanting to make a living at doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, sometimes I, I have to, I thank God, all, I talk to God all day, every day. So I have to thank him because I mean like, God, you actually let me do what I love to do, sing, dance, and entertain and see the world while I'm right. doing it. And meet tons of people. Yeah, meet yeah. people from, you know, um, a wise man told me one time, he said, you see, your name will travel to places that your feet will never go. And at the time when he told me that, I didn't really understand it. He said, just remember, I told you that this was forever ago. Fast forward, I used to perform on Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, cruise ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that for about 10 years in their showroom. And when you're on a cruise line, on a cruise ship, you meet people from all over the world. Some places I never even heard of. It's like, wow, I never heard of that, right. you know, where they're from. And so we would perform in their showroom and people you know, we get introduced to people scream and holler for you and clap and want to shake your hand and take pictures with you, want you to sign autographs. And so I'm, 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 I'm experiencing this and I'm signing autographs one night. And there was a group of ladies said, oh, can we take a picture with you? And I can't remember what country they were from. And they say, I took a picture with them. I was like, you know, sure, no problem. This, that, another, take a picture. And they say, we will take this and tell people about you and our country. Mm -hmm. And so it hit me like a ton of bricks at that time, what he told me. They would take my name to their country and tell people about, and I've never been there. So my name would right. travel to places that my feet would never go. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I know. Isn't that incredible? It's, so it's absolutely not. I have, this has been one of the most amazing things that has ever, me doing music. I also, um, along my music journey, like right now today, I go to senior citizen facilities and I get a chance to sit down with the seniors. And I get down and I, in each one of the facilities that I go to, I'm there for an hour when I'm not performing with my band live on stage. So, so it's just me without my band and my tracks. And I sit down with just a room full of seniors and I just get to sing to them. And I go like classics like Sinatra, you know, yeah. um, Johnny Mathis, you know, um, Jackie Wilson, classic stuff. And they absolutely love you. Mm -hmm. and, they, and it's so heartfelt. It's almost like you try to hold back the tears because they come up to you and they just don't want you to leave. And right. they thank you because they really appreciate you, number one, for coming. Right. And then spending this time with them and then singing all those classic songs right. that they remember growing up on. So that's I love what I do. Yeah, I'm sure they look forward to that. Oh. Because they have a routine. And then those that are there might battle things like dementia and yes. Alzheimer's. So yeah. that might be a core a memory, it, yeah, mm -hmm. that they might remember the long past, well, sometimes the short-term memory doesn't really. There was a gentleman, yeah. one, one, uh, one, one facility I was at, he had to be close to 90 years old, mm -hmm. and he's sitting there and he's just rocking yeah, back and forth. Yeah, that is what he And you know what I'm saying? Too. Right. And they remember. And so next thing I know, he had tears in his eyes, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my goodness. So I was doing Sinatra, and so the activities director came to me after the show, she said, he would love to meet you. Is that okay with you? I said, sure, sure. Right. So we had just came out of COVID. So that's why she wanted to make sure it was mm -hmm. okay with me. I said, sure. <clears throat> so I go over to meet him and he has tears in his eyes. He said, young man, he said, because I did my way by Sinatra. Mm -hmm. He said, I have to tell you, Frank Sinatra and I were very close friends. Oh, wow. And he said, if yeah. I hadn't have been looking at you, I would have thought Frank was here. Right. He just, now he's crying. Now I'm about, I'm right. trying to keep myself together. Well, that's amazing, though. Yeah. And then you can yeah. sit and learn their story. Yes. You can learn a lot from people. You really can. You know, mm -hmm. just by listening yes. to them. Mm -hmm. And so do you also write music? Or do I do. You? Okay. I do. I'm a songwriter. Um, I have two CDs out. My previous, mm -hmm. my first CD, first original CD came out in 2016. And okay. um, I'm working on my new project now. Okay. Now. So would you say you mostly your genre is Motown? Uh, no, actually, you know what? I just love I, my, my, my genre is just old school music. Okay. And I love old school r and I love old school mm -hmm. rock and roll. I love old classics. I love Motown, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I just love old school music. Mm -hmm. So where does your inspiration stem from when it comes to lyrics and stuff like you that? You know, um, um, my life experiences. Okay. Yeah, a lot of things that you go through in life and you, it's amazing how you can just sit back and like, wow, I actually experienced this mm -hmm. and write about it. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. So you've been here, which is interesting. Very rarely do I get a performer that's been in Vegas the duration of their career. Mm -hmm. How have you seen live music and entertainment change, and where do you think that's heading? Mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing to me. I used to perform on the Las Vegas Strip. We had a, uh, um, so if you want to call it a residency, we were, really mm -hmm. resident. we were there like five nights a week um, out at the Paris Hotel. And it's changed from that now. Just since COVID happened, it's very rarely that we're out there like that. So that's why you see a lot of artists today here in Vegas work in different groups because you can't get consistent work just in one group. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing that's changed the most because we used to consistently work. And now it's broken up till you have some dates here and you might be another date two months down mm -hmm. the road there. So you have to do different things. So I actually, um, I do my own solo show, which I have an upcoming show. I'm doing a tribute to Michael Jackson and Prince. And it's a dinner show at the Italian American Club on March 3rd. And you are cordially Ooh. invited. <laughs> okay, I love yeah. Michael Jackson and oh, yeah. Prince. Yes. And it, it, uh, I'll be with my live band and it's a 90 minute fire show. Okay, it's a funny. But I also perform with one of my friends. He does a tribute to Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, okay, love and so, that. Mm -hmm. And so I sit in with him and perform with him. And then another friend who does a Motown show. And then okay. I tour with them too. But again, it's because mm -hmm. we don't just have one consistent. Like if I was consistently five nights a week doing my own show, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have to do all right. those other shows. But since we're not, that's the big change that yeah. is now. Mm -hmm. So what about Vegas has made you stay here? I, I grew up here. Um, mm -hmm. Being that... Right. Um, being that I was uh, I was born down south in Big Sur, Mississippi, my mom moved here when I was three. I've been here all my life. Right. So it's home for me, but it's also being an entertainer, being in the middle of all this okay. amazing entertainment. That so you to. love it. Uh, uh, You're uh, like, absolutely. this is my home, but I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, the yeah. thing about it is I love to travel, but I always love to come home. Yeah. So that's There's something about the city that's nowhere like it in the world. Nowhere. It's like a fancy things that happen here that are Vegas. Mm -hmm. You go somewhere else and you forget that, wait, I'm not in Vegas right now. I can't be doing all that, right. right? You know, and the amazing thing about it is I've learned with all the different places that I've traveled to, people don't think people live in Vegas. They mm -hmm. just, they can't see past the Las Vegas Strip. So they think, you guys actually live yeah, in Vegas? Yeah, you do live on the Strip. <laughs> like, no, it's right. one road. Where's everyone going to go? Right, like, right, right. If there are people who they actually, do. they actually think that. It's like, yeah, they got neighborhoods there. Yeah. <laughs> the whole scene in Nevada, what's happening? <laughs> right. It's amazing. You just like try not to be ignorant, but at the same time, right. you're like, Right. I mean, so it's like a fantasy world. Right. They forget yeah. it's a city. And that's very true. It's like it's a fantasy. Weird. Because yeah. they come here and they visit. They stay on the Las Vegas Strip. And they. some of them tell me, man, when we come to Vegas, we don't even sleep. They just mm -hmm. stay up. Go from hotel, the rooms hotel. to put their stuff. All right. Change, the shower, and then they go back and out. So yeah. they never think that. Yeah. We have a neighborhood here. We live here, right? <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> like, on the side of the road? Like, what yeah. do you mean? So where do you want to end up? Because I highly doubt that this one is like it for you. Do you have any other goals that oh, you want to push I, yourself further? Where goals, is the end goal for you? I have a, my goals. I am focused and set and driven on winning the best new artist of the year for okay. a Grammy, mm -hmm. best new artist of the year for a Soul Train Award, best new artist of the year for a BET Award. Mm -hmm. for, and I am focused. That's my ultimate goal is to yeah. have a national hit record. Amazing. And that's not that's hard to achieve. Like you've already emasculated yeah. so much. So I mean, and I'm gonna tell you, those things are not far away. Mm -hmm. And I feel that in my heart. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I, um, the Super Bowl is gonna be here for the first time, right? Ever. Usher is performing at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to go see Usher, and he's amazing. I mean, he's amazing. But I said to myself, what's different from what Usher does than what I do? He has hit records, and I don't. Right. That's the only difference. Yeah. I have a following. He has a larger following because he's a national recording mm -hmm. artist, so people know him all over the world. But I'm coming. Right. I'm I mean, coming. you're close because you recently just won. You're now in the yes. Hall of Fame. Yes. yes. And that's, that probably was an amazing achievement uh, for you to like amazing. get wrap your head around that you yeah. were inducted. Well, well, I think about where I started from. Mm -hmm. be like, look how far God has brought me. Right. You know, and he's not done with me yet. So I'm, right. I'm, yeah. I'm still. Yep. I'm, you're I'm, young. You got energy. You're doing all of these things. Yeah. So of course not. And I love people that don't want to just be here they right. want to continue to push right. as far as they can well, it's go one thing to be yeah. in, um, and i'm and i'm and i'm grateful to know that i have a following here in vegas but there's a whole world bigger than vegas oh, yeah. you know mm -hmm. 
to be a national recording mm -hmm. Maybe the international. You, you know, you you know, there's you more. Go. You already put more. They they got your picture yeah. someplace in the world that they you did. didn't know existed. That's my name. So, didn't even hey, know. you might be on like the wall didn't somewhere framed. People people ask me all the time. Say, what's the most amazing place you've ever traveled to and performed at? And it was London, England. Okay. So I got a chance to perform in London, England. And I got a chance. I did a one hour show, and I got a chance. I was there for three days and two nights, mm -hmm. and I got a chance to tour. Uh, um, London, where I was there, because I love sightseeing. I love to go sightseeing. And I learned about so much history in London. Yeah. And those are things that I love doing. I'm here because of my music. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not here um, just on a family vacation. I'm, right. I'm here because of my music. Had I not been doing music, I don't know if I've ever would have right. traveled there. But I got a chance to go to Westminster Abbey. Yeah. I, got, I got a chance to go to Buckingham Palace. Yeah. And I thought, like, wow, I grew up over in the hood. In Las Vegas, Nevada, and here I am at Buckingham. Right, Palace. because of my job. That. You know what and, I'm saying? It's a little and, different than you and, buying your ticket. And, 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 and let me correct you because I don't have a job. I have a career. Career. You know, and that's or, that's yes. and it's a big there's difference. A, there's a difference. It is right? a difference, mm -hmm. and I and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that because a lot of people do what they have to do every day. People, some people work their nine to five because they have to, and, and I and I love and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But I do what I love to do. Right. You know, I get up with my eyes open, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'd be like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, really so what legacy do you want to leave behind in music? Well, I want to, I want people, especially when people remember me, I want be, I want people that when they say E.C. Adams, I want them to remember how I made them feel. Mm -hmm. You know, people can sometimes forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Um, I've done shows where it's been people's birthday. And I had an opportunity and I just walk up to them and get a chance to sing happy birthday to them. And seeing in my shows, I give out roses and things, right, 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 and right. things like that. And so when I get up, walk up to somebody and sing happy birthday to them, and one of my um, one of my dear friends was getting was in a beauty shop getting her nails done, and the lady who I sang happy birthday to two weeks ago was in this day. And she said, it was this guy, he sang happy birthday to me on my birthday and it was so wonderful. This said, another his name was E.C. Adams and it was the best thing that ever happened to me that day. And she called me on the phone and she said, E.C., she said, there's a lady in here who you sang birth happy birthday to two weeks ago and she's still excited. Aww, and, and, yeah. and, and then she told the lady I was on the phone and she was oh, <laughs> Those are things amazing. that you yeah. cannot buy. Yeah. Lenny can't buy that. Yeah. So this final question is what I ask all of my um, guests on the show. It really mm -hmm. sums up who they are and their meaning and their purpose into what it is that they do. Mm -hmm. And so is there a philosophy that you live by? Um, God first. Mm -hmm. Put God first and you can conquer the world. Yeah, and that's what you've done. And you yes, high yes. heartedly believe everything that you're meant for you're going to have. I'll, go to, I'll wake up talking to God. I'll go to bed talking to God. I'll, I'll talk to mm -hmm. God all through my... I'll talk to God while I'm on stage. But God first, and there's nothing you can do. Yes. You can't do. Nothing can't you can't do. do. Yes. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so it's much for having me. It's been an amazing conversation with you. I've learned so much just by listening to you. So if you can tell the audience members, mm -hmm. um, your up next upcoming show so they can come support, and also your social media handles to get in touch with yes, you. Yes, I am E.C. Adams on Facebook and also on Instagram. Um, I will be performing a tribute to Michael Jackson and Prince, and that's Sunday. March the 3rd at the Italian American Club, and it's a dinner show. And doors open at 6 p.m., dinner starts at 6.30, show time is 8 p.m. Tickets are only $65 a person for dinner and a show. Now, where can you go in Las Vegas, Nevada, and get dinner and an amazing show for $65? Again, E.C. Adams, a tribute to Michael Jackson and Prince, Sunday, March 3rd at the Italian American Club. You can go to IACVegas.com and get your tickets. And your social media handles. Uh, and my social media is EC Adams on Facebook and also on um, Instagram. Okay. That's, That's him. So everyone, <laughs> round of applause for EC Adams. It's amazing conversation. Great energy, positive energy. Someone who is all about fulfilling their dreams. Got a lot of wisdom. You've seen a lot of things. You meet a lot of people. And I think that shapes you to what kind of performer you are. So congratulations on everything that you've been doing. So when we come back, there is one more guest. So make sure you guys don't go anywhere.